about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. His feet, his legs are in the earth. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. And yet you talk whether in a whisper or in a shout, he still hears. Which art in heaven Hebrews chapter 11 when you read verse 6 Hebrews 11 it says but without faith it is impossible to please God look up believers why for he that cometh to God must come with this conviction that he is that means he exists don't come hoping is he really alive Jesus is alive Forever he's alive. Amen. Remember that song? He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. Amen. I know that I'm serving which art in heaven. Your situation to say, where is the God? Can you see him? Just because to build a, job, a relationship. Many of you have friends you have never seen. Yet you are so close to them, you can feel the impulses of their emotions. Why are you feeling bad today? And he tells you, I have a bad day. Yet you've never seen him. They that worship him was worship him in spirit and in truth. Please, someone say he's alive. That means when you approach God in prayer, remember which art in heaven. He's in heaven yet he's with you. So we say he's here. An unbeliever looks at this and says, how stupid a statement. He's here? Where? Where is his chair? That's the carnal man. It's a mystery. How could he be seated on the throne, seated in my heart, and still in the room? What sort of a God is that? Anywhere there is a throne, he sits there. There is a throne in heaven, he sits there. There is a throne in my heart, he seated. When we build him a throne in this place, he sits. If your home builds him a throne, he sits. Anywhere he finds a throne, that means he's crowned king. He will come to honor you. Could that be why he's not found in your home? You have built yourself thrones, but you have not built him a throne. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him king of kings. Crown him Lord of Lords. Listen. Which art in heaven means you will require faith all the time. Without faith, there are things you cannot believe. Without faith, you cannot receive. Remember the scripture I taught you, Mark 11 verse 24. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have them you can never have what you have not received receiving is a spiritual thing i receive
receive that miracle i receive that job and you are laughing as if you have it genuinely and unbelievers look at you they keep mocking till they start celebrating next instruction to help us with prayer hallowed let's hurry up it says hallowed be your name verse 9 please keep verse 9 first samuel chapter 2 and then 30 hallowed be your name hallowed be your name means in spite of his fatherhood you must approach him with the spirit of reverence please look up the revelation of the fatherhood of god can so affect us it can get to a point in our lives where we trivialize him like many people have so he reminds you that even though you approach him with confidence you must approach him from a standpoint of reverence it's called Yirat Adonai the fear of the Lord it's not enough to believe in God you must revere him please give us that scripture Samuel it says wherefore the Lord God of Israel said I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever but now the Lord said be it far from me for them that honor me look up believers I will honor and they that despise me I will lightly esteem that means not take them seriously you must approach God with honor this is where the balance and, and I say this with every sense of respect Pentecostals and Charismatics have made a big mistake and a mess of the revelation of things like the grace of God and the fatherhood of God because in a bid to instill confidence in people to approach God sometimes if we are not careful we erode away the healthy reverence to have for God and God has a way of bringing you back to order when you dishonor him too much he has a way of doing something spectacular in your life that will reduce you back to say God I fear you he says now that you are back let's continue the way it used to be have you seen fathers remind their children and say hey, hey, hey it's all right you are jumping on me but remember this man you are jumping on is also ceo he's not just your father i've allowed you to climb my neck is enough you can climb my neck and play you can climb my neck and do whatever but by the time you bring spoon and say let's eat together and it becomes a habit then the father says no this is daddy's cup this is daddy's spoon the child leaves feeling bad but the father is happy because that is a balance otherwise it will graduate to dishonor one day he will do what the mother is doing the mother is playing with her husband and the child will come and slap the father too so he reminds you he did not marry you see the balance this is god there is a weakness in men every time great men are too available the temptation for dishonor is around the corner so there is always a way it's a weakness in men is the reason why even sociologically speaking most great men sometimes intentionally just create that difficulty to approach them as a way of reminding you that they did not get there by mistake when they give you access and they study your sense of honor or dishonor when they find out that the closer you are coming to them the more your dishonor is dropping they peg you there and you don't move forward from there maybe this is a lesson for someone to learn that may be why a door that was once opened closed against you because great people gave you unusual access and the revelation of their fatherhood was there but you missed the reverence part it's a combination of lion and lamb god is not only lamb he is lion you don't play with a lion you can play with a lamb because you see a lamb that later becomes a sheep does not have horns it can't hurt you it will only depend on the safety of the shepherd but the lion will tear you into pieces god is both he is both depending on who you are let me tell you this there are sides of god that are very fearful never miss the reverence part there are times that I return maybe from a crusade or from a meeting and I see the wonder walking power of God and sometimes I go down my knees and I say God Almighty I not only believe you I fear you Amen. 
maybe God is speaking to someone who has been trivializing God you walk to him casually I am the righteousness of God in Christ I didn't ask you to die for me you died for me now listen carefully here are my prayer requests we call it confidence number one I'm tired of this pay scale raise me up two I am this and we blackmail him and then we wrap everything up uh, I expect between now and the next two weeks if you are really God please listen I'm not being sarcastic never allow your reverence for God to erode no matter how close you get to God or greatness do not ever forget that greatness still remains greatness please this is a word of caution leaders maybe this is why many great people do not invite you to their tables again they have seen that you do not know how to manage the system of greatness no matter how God even if God comes to jump around you know once in a while you see him warning his disciples because they got too used to him and say hey before your father Abraham I am for that information don't you think you are just two years older than me Peter ah I know they killed all my age mates from two years and below don't you ever think we're age mates before your father Abraham was I am when he resurrected in John 21 he said little children have you any catch they were used to him by now none of them say ah God you are he's the ancient of days <laughs> That means you should never be ashamed of going down on your knees. You should never be ashamed of rolling before him. He deserves it. It is not, you are not, you are not, you are not ignoring the fact that you are his righteousness. You are not even ignoring your oneness. You are balancing the revelation of his fatherhood. You are letting him know that no matter how free you are with me, oh God, you are still the God of the universe. There are young people here, let me give you a counsel. This may be the reason why many great people in your life don't pay attention to you again. They gave you access that not even their senior executives have and you trivialized it. Oh, I can call that man's number. Let me put it on loudspeaker. You will see, the man loves me so much. When they discern that you do not know how to protect and preserve access, they will withdraw it. Are we learning something this night? Hallowed be your name. Boldness, according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, should not be mistaken for pride and dishonor. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Boldness is coming knowing that every sin and everything that can stand as a blockade has been gone why through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son now he has become a new one a living way he's given me access to the father now i come without a sense like Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority nor condemnation yet in the midst of it that reverence will still be there even in heaven they still bow yes sir even in the throne room they still bow you don't find anybody just running around the throne room and say it's my father's house there is still order satan is not there yet there is still order hallowed be your name next verse verse 10 6 verse 10 thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven please look up I can spend the whole night, even if this were a vigil, discussing this one scripture. This is Jesus teaching us on prayer. Let's do a quick recap. He says, when you pray, this should be your understanding. That you are praying to the Father, you will require faith because it's in a realm that is not earthly. Are we together? That you must approach him with the spirit of reverence. And then your priority, as far as the manifestation, is not just your needs. 
pray that his kingdom comes you know what his kingdom is the kingdom of god look up please the kingdom of god represents the life the culture of heaven it talks about the sovereign rule of heaven finding expression that you pray that his kingdom would come how by his will being done so his kingdom only comes where his will is being done wow do you know what god's will is i wish above all things the spirit of god speaking through the apostle that he prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. that's the will of god it is not his will that any man perish but that all come into repentance let me tell you this please look up if the will of god is really done in your life you may not have a prayer request again are you seeing what he's teaching you he's saying that even though i will answer your request the reason why you still have prayer requests is because the kingdom has not truly come and his will is not yet done that if the will of god is allowed to be enforced you will not have any request again so more than the prayer requests that seem to multiply by the day pray that his influence through his will find expression in your life if the kingdom comes your life must be a replica of heaven question did you ever see any angel making a request in heaven did you ever see any four and twenty elder making a request in heaven did you ever see any of the living creatures all that happens in heaven is worship do you know why because the kingdom has found expression so if the kingdom comes to your house you will not even need to say god what about this issue of school fees the kingdom of god is not just some cloud the kingdom of god is god's will and god's intent in its entirety finding expression in your life someone say your kingdom come Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's a prayer. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Imagine what happens to Nigeria if his kingdom comes and his will is done. Imagine what happens in Africa if his kingdom comes and his will is done. Imagine what happens to your political career, to your business. Listen, let me tell you this, when the kingdom of God comes upon your business, don't think you'll be praying in tongues around. You will see heaven in a way that will bring everyone to say, what is this? When the kingdom of God came and met a man inside a den of lions, not even the lions could hurt him. That's kingdom come. When the kingdom of God came upon Samaria through the prophecy of one man, the Bible says in 24 hours, by this time, tomorrow and four lepers were the instruments that were used do not trivialize you know most times when we say the kingdom come we just think evangelism soul winning no kingdom come is more than just soul winning kingdom come is the reality the the full span of the sphere the intense the culture the desire of the king being superimposed in a life listen to what it says it says matthew chapter 6 please give us verse 10 it says your kingdom come your will be done in earth not on earth in earth and like you've heard me say the first earth is you you are that earthen vessel so let the kingdom come in my life let the kingdom come in my business let the kingdom come in my destiny let the kingdom come in my church when you pray your kingdom come by your will being done it's a very powerful thing look at me brothers and sisters we have subliminally been taught that the will of god is always to our destruction you know most people hate saying thy will be done because they suspect that if you ever give god a chance his will will so frustrate you so when we say your will be done 
especially for something that we already have our own plans lord i don't know if it's your will to collect this job that cbn is just giving me but your will be done when your mind is saying god if you try it it will play with me i just got a job in cbn i'm saying your will be done so people will hear it but you too you know listen his will is what made heaven heaven if you doubt what his will can do look at heaven heaven is what happens when the will of god is not resisted i repeat heaven is what happens when his will is not resisted thy kingdom come your priority should be his kingdom when his kingdom comes drugs violence arm robbery corruption all of these things will fade away remember the bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth the old one folding like a carpet that's what happens when his kingdom comes let me tell you something if you're having problem in your workplace your company you don't just need good leaders you don't just need intelligent people what you may need truthfully speaking is his kingdom to come kingdom come is not just for the advantage of christians alone you are saying heaven and its reality let it find expression there is no recession in heaven there is no up today and down tomorrow in heaven a description of heaven is what proverbs i think chapter 4 and verse 18 i hope i'm right he says but the path of the just is as a shining light it says shining ever brighter more and more there is no better yesterday reject that thing over your life your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow reject that kind of life that that plateaus and then you start plunging down that is the that is a a dangerous heritage that africa tries to propose to us that you rise to a point whether in ministry whether in life and they say it's your time after what fade away i reject it the bible says the path of the just 30 years after now we're still shining listen it is unto you according to what you believe next scripture matthew chapter 6 we're still walking it am i wasting your time give us this day <laughs> our daily bread someone shout god is a giver one more time say god is a giver say my bread is daily oh nigerians prophesy say my bread is daily you have shown me your monthly bread you have shown me your quarterly bread as an investor let me see your daily bread because the prayer says the nature of god's giving is that it resets after every 24 hours have you believed that my god is father and father is giver I have prioritized your kingdom give us this day give us this day give this family this day any man that cannot provide for his family the bible says he has denied the faith are we bible students and is worse than an infidel so if it is true that we handed over this home to god where is our bread for today someone you need to take your eyes away from your company from the government I'm not a politician, but in Africa and all over the world, we blame everything on those in power. We blame everything on those members of parliament. Anything that goes wrong, both the one that is our responsibility and the one that is not our responsibility. There are things only God can do. Give us this day. Ah, like a child will run and say, Mommy, I'm hungry. And the mother is proud to be mother follow me she says let's get to the kitchen and let me see. you will see what i've done and there are options what do you want there's this there's that there's that and the child is proud of such a you know these adverts that they show you see this blue band adverts or whatever have you seen that kind of thing and you see the children even though they are acting 
you look at it and you're just salivating and you you walk you walk to a shop or a mall and you're ready to buy the same thing do you believe listen to me do you believe god is a giver do you believe he can bless you daily now please i'm not promoting irresponsibility we're very responsible people and when we teach we teach from a balanced perspective because if you just teach believers to just wait for god another way if you don't balance it you will produce irresponsible citizens this is what has made many young people to not be productive they will not get jobs they sit down and live in superstitious realities that keep punishing them and their wives and their children this is not what i'm advocating i am saying that as a believer in addition to all you do there is an advantage by reason of your being grafted into christ that it provides you a platform aside you can hold your salary and you can hold god's provision you will know the difference believe me let me speak to you in the name of honesty how many of you know that based on the current african salary scale if you are to build an enviable destiny many many jobs as far as this country and africa is concerned not to insult and demean government or our entrepreneurs they are doing their best but by the scale of salary you will not be able to do much in your lifetime please believe it early You want to do ministry many of you here are pastors my dear co-laborers in the kingdom you will not be able to do ministry and if all you are depending on entirely respectfully speaking is just the givings and what comes from the bowls offerings you know that sooner or later there will be grievous tears that's a risk a big risk When I approach God, I know that He's a giver. And let me tell you how God gives. <laughs> Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Please don't forget this for the rest of your life. Give, the Bible says, and it shall be given unto you. Here's how God gives. Ready? Read with me. Good measure. Uh huh. Press down, shaken together and running over shall hold on so the way god gives is that he goes around the earth and he looks for men that he coordinates to your life that's how god gives and can i tell you something are you aware that the population of men is increasing on earth that may be bad for the climate but it's good for your giving because that means there are enough actors if you refuse to give god can use another person too shall men give he talks to you and you argue it takes one year imagine if god now tells this man and says give give joshua selman say a hundred thousand if it takes you one year to obey god wouldn't i suffer God, God gave the instruction in January. You obeyed December. What now happens to me? <laughs> so while you are arguing and disobeying, he will find another human. Please, someone believe that God, there are enough men to be used by God to bless you. Listen, when you know this, you stop becoming angry at individuals. Don't put pressure on your uncle. He's only one of 7.2 billion people that are available to be used. Listen. Save yourself the heart attack of blackmailing people and allow and and making people feel bad for being successful. We do that a lot in Nigeria. Once somebody rises from a family, he's almost he will keep quiet for many years. Sometimes it's until he's about to die before you know he's that successful. Because everybody comes and you now say, I prayed for you. I mean, if you pray this intercession, it's you and God. God is the one who rewards you. But why put pressure on individuals like that? But if you know that God, see, let me tell you, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you can be here in Abuja or anywhere, whereas 
your answer will come from Israel. Someone will come and say, I don't know you. Ah. The next time someone tells you something, told me, say, aha, the giver is at work. The giver is at work. Moving men. Kali Parus Kadabata. Moving systems. The giver is at work. Please believe what I'm telling you. The giver is at work. Someone wants to shut down my company. The giver. The giver, I approach you. Daily bread. Daily bread. The urgency in this family. One month may not meet us alive. Where is the giver? Government cannot guarantee giving you daily. Your boss cannot guarantee giving you daily. I bring you good news. Abba is sufficient enough to provide for your daily bread. Please sit down. Give us this day. When God was going to send me to this city, you know what it means to come to Abuja from Zaria? You are intelligent, think well. If God does not send you, you will not only disgrace yourself, you will be a memorial, you will be a lesson for people. You, you will be a portrait of what disobedience looks like. They will use you in Bible schools to teach people. Parents will use you to caution their children People in politics will use you to warn, to show people how painful it is to disobey God. Hallelujah. But when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Hear me. I want you to leave tonight's service with a sense of confidence. Look at men as if they owe you. Look at them as if you are wondering. You mean he has not spoken to you yet? I, I expect you to be one of the actors. I don't mean talk to them and harass them. Exodus chapter 3 and 21. Let me finish that part so we move quickly. We have a few minutes and we're done. Exodus 3 21. This is how God gives. Please read it. You're a Christian. Ready? Want to read. And I will give these people. Hold on. Who will give? Who will give? God. And I will give. But this is how I will give. In the sight of the Egyptians, I will give you by placing something on your life called favor listen listen and the character of that favor is that even if you, it is egyptians i need to use when favor is on you is like a spell even egyptians that have oppressed you for 430 years if your favor only works for family members it's not authentic favor Please give us that scripture exodus 3 21 it shall come to pass this is the proof i have given to you that when you go hallelujah you shall not go empty you shall not go empty you shall not go empty i know you lost your wallet but don't kill yourself ah my life is finished how much is there kill yourself like that the savior is in your heart a little box with maybe a few dollars or something just fell and you, you are giving yourself heart attack every time you wake up in the morning and you see that there are still men rejoice i'm transferring in you a very powerful mentality it's not a mentality of irresponsibility it's a superior advantage we have in this kingdom man of god let me tell you this don't be writing letters to people and say till now god has not spoken to you don't harass anybody they didn't call you
let me tell you something from where hold on please guys from where you are if you dare wake up in the morning and hear the sound of cars moving and see people moving rejoice there are enough men the giver he can play men like chess from heaven you move forward move forward go to him they don't have to know you strangers shall feed your flock is it not in your bible these are my convictions believe me we are not just shouting for nothing if you don't believe what i'm teaching you sooner or later life will so whip you because you will see how limited your platforms are man is how god gives he uses men 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 so he can sit down and speak to you and say this family i'm instructing you that they never beg for bread again listen and you come to that family and say god sent me here how many of you are working in this family only two of us how many of you are graduates all of us why is that so anyway God has instructed me to come it is God that gives but he uses men take away superstition around giving giving comes through men what God gives you is he gives you the capital that buys money it's called two riches in one of our sessions on finances I hope God will grant us grace to deal with it if all you have is money you are in trouble Because there is a realm you get to where everybody around you is rich. What then do you have? Money itself is a product. There is what buys it. The same way money can buy a bottle of drink. There is something that also buy, buys money. The name of the capital that buys money is called true riches. You are only wealthy when you have true riches. Someone can dash you money and it will finish but not when you have two riches one of them there are seven of them that God gives men but only one of them I will share with us tonight is called favor favor is two riches it is the capital that buys money maybe I should add one more should I add one more the second of the two riches is called relationships everything money can buy relationships can pay for too in the multitude of men the bible says is a king's honor if all you have is just access to financial resources without men you will not do much not everything opens to finances there are things that only open to the ministry of men the lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it are we blessed <sighs> next verse matthew 6 media help us matthew chapter 6 again now i believe verse 11. this is a very serious one preparing to round up and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors now please let me have your attention Jesus gets to a very sensitive part of his prayer. He's talking of forgiveness. Please keep the scripture there for a while. Forgive us our wrongs or our debts. He didn't stop there. He says, as we forgive those who sin against us, some versions will say. There are many revelations about this sensitive aspect of prayer. And if we do not learn this, we may not be able to excel in our prayer lives. A few thoughts on this. Please follow me. Number one. All men are human. They fail and they grow weary. This is the revelation Jesus is giving. Forgive us our debts as we also are debtors to others. He's planting in his disciples a revelation that you are in the world of men. That the best of all men are still men. Husband, wife, 
business partners, all kinds of people. Somewhere in your journey in life, you will have to find an occasion where you will need to communicate forgiveness. Are we together? Forgive us our debts. He would have stopped there. But he says, there's something I need to let you to know. As we ourselves forgive our debtors, it's a chain reaction. This is the one area where everybody is involved. Both the one praying, those listening, he's saying, forgive us our debts. That means as you live in this world, this is not just a prayer issue now. It's a revelation. Live with the consciousness that all men are human. Let the propensity for forgiveness be ever there in your heart. Ready to communicate it because you will find many men. And the higher you rise, the more there will be need to communicate this. Listen, living a life without forgiveness will be a life of sorrow. Eventually, you will find out that you will be the only one standing. The chances that everybody around your life will offend you one day is 100%. The chances that you will offend everybody around your life is 100%, regardless of your spiritual growth. You read about Jesus who carried a whip. Is it in your Bible? That one day Jesus entered a temple. He didn't report the rebellious people to the Roman government as a nice coordinated citizen would do. He carried the whip and took laws in his hands. Whip all the people, turned the table of the exchangers and was breathing hard and said, my house should be called the house of prayer. If you were in government, ladies and gentlemen, and a report reaches you that Jesus just, just did something like this, what would you do? Now, Jesus, I love you, but why have you tied my hand now? That's what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. When they gave it they said no prayer should happen to any god for a period of 30 days daniel went to pray he didn't do wrong but he offended the laws of the land offending people has nothing to do with being evil it's a difference in perspective difference in values you may have an maybe a muslim driver and one day you quickly want to pick something in the bank and you come out and you see the person praying and he acts as if you didn't employ him he doesn't even pay attention to you until he's done with his prayer and you while he's praying you're just thinking and wondering how do i punish this man do i drive him do i jail him and yet he's, he's a very sincere man a man only honoring his conviction forgive us our sins Forgiveness is painful. That's why Jesus took out time to talk. Forgiveness is an aspect of giving. I hope you know. Don't give money alone. Forgiveness is giving. You laid aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hand. Of those you have created You took all my guilt and shame When you died and rose again Now today you reign In heaven and now exalted I really want to worship you my God You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you You are the only one who died for me Save your life to set me free So I lift my voice to you Listen Forgiveness is a profound proof of spiritual maturity You are a businessman, you will need it you are a leader, you will need it. You are a father, you will need it. How many hired servants, the prodigal son said, does my father have? And I am here sitting with the swine. 
I may not know many things about my father. I've been with the swine a long time, but there is something I know about him, that he is rich in mercy. Therefore, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. As soon as the father saw him afar off, the Bible says the father came and embraced him. You are messed up, but you are still my son. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.